Hello everyone, welcome back. So K Rand again, and this is the the final one. As this is the finishing stage that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to explain a lot, talk about the tools, and basically go through the processes and try to show you some what I think are common mistakes and how to avoid them. So we're here to show you how to get this type of finish and this is a K rand again Weber and Fascia there's plenty of other sort of coloured renders, silicone renders out there that can be used to all get this type of finish and this is a scratched finish with three ashlar cuts in it I call them V cuts so let's just see see what we've got covered so far to this video so on the first part of this series we have how to mix the k -rand. on the second part we cover preparation and applying the k -rand. and part three is all about getting your k -rand straight and flat ready for the finishing for the scratch coat finish on the k -rand. so basically if you haven't watched all the videos i do recommend you give them a watch possibly after this one and it'll give you a greater feel of what way things go on every single stage so this is all well broken up and hopefully easy to digest and follow as promised i'm going to show you how i get this finish on my k rent so here i am ready to finish it and usually i would rather my render a little tighter when i come to scratch finish it but I obviously am fighting the light here as well and I did coat this the day previous again I always let it sit overnight nearly nearly all the time and um, never actually done a same day finish and um, did do work for other people that did it but and personally I didn't like the finish so I always like doing it next day I feel more confident in it um, if it has hardened a bit more, you, well, yes, you gotta put a bit more elbow grease in, but you always get the quality finish that you want. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you go when it's too soft. Here, it is slightly too soft than what I, even I would like it, so I'm just scratching sort of the high spots back. And what I'll do is also that'll help it breathe and should help it sort of set that bit quicker then with the airflow getting into it as again I close mine in pretty well and uh, don't overwork it but I do get it sort of smooth enough where I know it's flat and straight and the smoothness will help me find any wee mistakes but let me jump on to one of the sort of mistakes that can happen if you go too early so this is the finishing float um, from Rafina and basically when you're going to use those you'll always want to use them in a circular motion like so so this is the exact same mix that was mixed and put on the wall and this is one of the common problems if you go too early the k builds up in the teeth and will create smooth areas on the wall and you don't want that it looks hideous Another thing guys is when you're doing reveals to try not to keep going one way or anywhere on the wall as these lines come up very patterned you always want to go in a circular motion like I showed you previous. So back to the wall and yes I am sort of jumping left to right on it just taking my time knocking the any build up off straight away get it off the float. If you were going to go early, this would be a must. You'd need to always make sure there's no build up. As like I said previous there, it will make a shiner on the wall. And what will happen there is, all you're doing is you're rubbing it up as if you were rubbing up satin cement. And you're rubbing it smooth then. Because the product's rubbing against the product and it goes smooth instead of the slight textured scratch finish you get. And then what you'll find you'll have to do is when it sets a bit more, you have to scratch that area again which will make 
a big bump in the wall, a big hollow into the wall. And it's very, very unforgiving on K Rain, especially lighter colours. And you know, actually some darker colours are very, very unforgiving. So that's to me that's the main sort of going early is one of the, the main problems with K Rain. Obviously going too late is an even just as big problem. So K Rain like anything to do with rendering and plastering is very much so same as timings, you know, it's the same mistakes can happen as all about your timings. So, say you did have a bit of dirt in the wall, you can pick it out, just like I did there now. Bit of a stone or a bit of old cement. And from your fresh scrapings off, as I'm doing here, I'm collecting a bit in my hand. You can put it back into the hole, compact it, and scratch it back off, and it will set just as solid as concrete no jokes it'll be as tight as the rest of the wall not a problem the same goes for if you get a wee air bubble hole somewhere that wasn't properly coated and there was a bit of trapped air you'll find it will rub into a void in which case again collect some of your clean scrapings don't dig right down into the muck or the stones or gravel whatever it is D just take the, the nice clean surface of the scratchings up press it into the hole, try and compact it nicely without affecting the surrounding area and scratch it off just as you would the rest of the k -rant. and it will come up the perfect job. So these guys are getting a sort of grasp of what's happening now similar to render basically um, where it's soft don't rub, where it's tightening and harder rub and um, again also where it's soft if you are rubbing no pressure and again if it is hard more pressure and um, so yes when it is soft it may take a bit more skill and knowledge because you will learn from your mistakes when to stop rubbing it is very very important as soon as you make a mistake in carrying it's very very hard to rectify so obviously i could have learned a few things from when i was working on site when i was a lot younger actually one of the, the first things we did on external render was k -Rend when I was very, very young. I know I look young, but I have been doing this quite a long time now. So, yeah, you will, during this video, you'll probably hear a lot of tapping of the tools going on. And again, that's just me making sure that the, the blades, the wee teeth on the scratch and float are clean and clear. As I don't want no, no smooth areas on this. It's to be a slight pitted textured finish which is called the scratch finish, Malakush finish. So that's that's the idea guys. That's why you keep hearing that topping noise in the background. And I suggest you get into that bit of a habit of even looking at the float. Um, it'll do no harm whatsoever. Again, you can use an eye bar to help you get this nice and straight. And again, I don't use one particularly because I get it all straight when I'm coating. I know a lot of people think that's crazy, but I also think it may be crazy to rely on straight on the wall. It may be very hard the next day. A bit crazy as well. Get it straight when it's soft, it's a bit easier. But yeah, but I know the eye bars work. It gives you a nice straight wall as well, but if you don't have one, you can still use your straight edge to check the wall and see where it's straight, where it's not. But do remember, when you scratch off too far, you can't really rectify it, guys. Um, wee holes being filled up again with the, the fresh stuff off the ground is fine, but trying to fill anything large can shell off later on. Um, so you don't really want to be leaving things up to trying to scratch all the way back to keep it looking straight. You want to you wanna just take your time when you're finishing k -Rand. Um, obviously if it's harder you can speed up a bit get a bit more pressure in but like I said you're going to want to take your time get it right from the very very start um, keep the pressure off the float keep checking the float especially if it's soft possibly go and take tea take a long tea break if it's soft the way it is here don't sort of don't take any risks um, the product is expensive gear so you don't want to be making a mess um, and have to tip a wall off and start again so 
you know, just just food for thought, guys. Um, and again, learn from other people's mistakes, and you'll you'll do very well in life in general. You'll see now that I'm going after all the wee smooth bits that are left. Um, I'll try and the best way to actually catch them is looking left and right and up and down because the sun will pick up all the enemy smooth bits very very clearly so you'll know not not to leave them basically also a wee dust down with the brush helps find them as well as cleaning off the wall and leaving the perfect finish I have purposefully left a few mistakes in this which the ones you keep I keep referring to as shiners and again, I've done that for the sake of this video. I want to show you how to, de to detect them and fix them. So you may be thinking, so far it doesn't look too bad. But may I and purposefully have left these small defects so that I can show you what it is I'm talking about. So all needs a good dusting down still. But there's a couple of what I call shiners along there and they still need just rubbed out just gently and um, having that great sun to show you exactly like the really shine when you get the right angle and the camera's not just picking that up great but you do need to look left right up down on k -Ren. so along the bottom here just cutting in the sloped at the bottom and that's going to allow for me to do another v coming up to meet this one um, that's another project, another demonstration for you guys, so you have to subscribe to see that. And what better tools here to use than the Rambo base cutter. And it has a level on it, and again, gotta get these lanes level as possible, as the next one will show it up. If it goes level, and one's not level, they'll really show each other off to being a bit of a poor job, so... You wanna take your time and cut something like this, make sure you get it right. And um, as you can see, still soft enough to cut these lanes and stuff in. And you will see later on when I do the V's, I'm really losing light. So I'm gonna lose the light because that it's winter, basically. That's also why this, there's less dry in, and this is taking a wee bit longer to do. As like I said, when you are scratching and doing things, you wanna sort of have your timings right. So, sped this up guys, um, you get the idea of what I'm doing with this cutting tool here. And I'm going to jump on here to the Eichler cuts next. Um, this is basically just a reverse of the way I do my big cut plinths in satin cement, only it's going the opposite way. Um, uh, I prefer it stopping on a slope than on the square edge. Again, if you are using buttons with K-Range, you might want to let it. I knew I was cutting this anyway, and that's why I removed the rule. I could have left the rule on and cut it, and then took the rule off a day or two later. But I was always intending on moving the rule and cutting up a wee bit, as this is where all my measurements are going. So, things may not look like they're measured, but they're sort of measured for sections. But, again, you might, you know, you might want to let the rule set for maybe four days before you come tap it and remove it and then you can hopefully there's not too much back up on the stuff um, but if you're going to go at it when it's still soft make sure you run something sharp along the edge so you don't get any broken edges or if you were going to do that also put it in your mind that you need a real clean smooth rule and possibly even crease it down so that it releases good and comes away better so this is the Eichler cutter tool in action. Again, sped up this process a wee bit because I have been taking my time, making sure things are straight level before I start cutting into it. As it would be very difficult to fill a big V in that you've just cut out of the wall. So the refiner Eichler cutter has a blade on it that you bolt in and you can set the depth of that blade so you go really, really deep or you go fine, fine wee cut. And believe it or not, over time they do blunt down when you're doing, you know, if you're doing maybe six, seven houses, the blade will be blunt. And I do remember the old boss, his cutter would have had a blade on either end, which was much, much handier when you were coming to certain corners, you weren't having to swap it out. So if Rafaina's listening, 
it'd be better to just add on an extra couple of quid and put two blades with every colour as it will will be a much superior job it is a great job as it is as you can see how neat it actually does cut the lines guys it's the perfect V for Krand and Weber these this type of ice art cut is perfect again I wouldn't even use this for satin cement but I imagine it will work very well I may test it sometime I've just always used you guys know the crack anyway always just sort of use the coin color and cut away with that and get a nice smooth clean finish but imagine again this Eichler color will work just as good again when doing this just give it a gentle brush down make sure you get all the, the crumbs out as k rain them crumbs on the floor that dust that scratched off will set rock hard just like screed does guys it's just it's the same concept it's a, a moist mix that will when when given time will set really hard as a rock so you don't want to be leaving all the crumbs inside the v cuts and um, you can see that one there look how messy it sort of looks if i left that without brushing it out they would actually set hard and would ruin the whole sharp edge of what the, the eyeslar color from rafina actually does achieve um, the other thing you've noticed here, I've cut all the left hand side and again that's because I'll have to swap the blade around to cut the right hand side so that the blade is on the right hand side of the cutter. If you just want to see the cutter up close, um, I have a couple of shots during this as well but I unbox it on video on the channel so just gotta go on and look for, I think it's along with the sponge floats and the refined ashlar cutter. So it's in amongst them. Again, when doing detailed work, you'll probably always want to have a pointing tool um, or a small tool like so, just just for wee clean ups, wee touch ups, um, because the little things really, really make the bigger job pop out in the end. So again, instead of swapping the tool, starting on the left and swapping it back and forward, back and forward, just to say that swap it in one go and get it finished and also you can if you really wanted you can tack the buttons on and just fill in the holes the masonry nails leave as you pull out um, that would be the most sensible thing to do on the legs of a big large cable is obviously have an extra set of hands with you to help you hold but get it all plumbed up and lined up around the house wherever the measurements go or whatever if you're doing your own project what you've decided and get it all plumb nail it on as you go just just as you would on a satin cement render plinth or base or bell cast and um, you're going to dash out round so basically the same idea um, the other big question i was getting with k -Rand was undercoats why have i satin cement coated this why do you have to satin cement coat it can you go on black can you go on brick and um, i think it I think I have on a couple of jobs went over brick, but I did SBR them, scratch them, and then carry in them. I think they did come up very, very well. Um, but again, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to go straight on the brick with just carry in. I would want to base coat it at the very least with their stuff. Um, again, people say should you base coat with the block when. When we first started with this stuff, honestly, we were going straight on the block. Then we were doing scratch coats. Then we were told you weren't allowed to do scratch coats. Um, even though we never had any issues. But I think it was just k -Ren thought less of their product was being used. So they didn't want it being used. Or maybe it was the fact that, you know, they wanted their base coats used. So Sun Cement wasn't making them any money. Um, I could be wrong, but I would need somebody from KRN to tell me that that's wrong. Um, but as far as I know, the reps at the start said you could work it over satin cement scratch coat. Then it was all changed to just straight onto the block with the KRN. And it is a finished coat render. It's supposed to be breathable and waterproof. So there's no reason why it can't go straight on the block and be both the scratch and the finish as if you have been watching all the videos i've done on carry you will notice i don't do it in one coat i do do two coats same day 
um, the way I was always done it. Uh, again, the way I always prefer to do it is cut it on, get it all flat, straight, neat and tidy the day before, scratch it off the next day. Um, just the way sort of I've always done it. And best results, in my opinion, is from that method. If you did need to do something small one day, um, frost proofer and accelerators will be your friend. But burn in mind, something like that, you're going to have to really take your measurements seriously. If you're going to put in a full bag, then whatever water and frost proofer has to go in needs to be exact. Otherwise, it will change the colours. You'll have a... It'll look like an army pattern on the thing, so... Whereas when you're just going clean water and K-Rand, it won't matter so much with the mixes. You will want to have this very, very similar consistency. But again, if you're watching my videos, you'll see that I do like a nice creamy coat at the very end just to close everything in and lock it down ready for the scratch coat the following day. So I think I have pretty much covered everything. And again, yes, this, this Ashlar color would probably work on satin cement. But it really, really does work great on the K-Rand and the Weber. And as you can see, it's a really robust tool as well. So if you drop this thing, it's not going to bend and damage. Um, it would take an awful lot of force to actually damage this thing. Um, and, you know, that's that's all you really need it for is the Ashlar cuts. You can also get different shaped blades, square shapes. Um, and I'm sure you could get rounded shapes if you wanted some rounded ones cut in as well. Um, but I do think the V's, the eye stars, are the nicest shape. Um, gives a nice sort of contrast shadow. But yeah, let me know guys. No doubt I've missed something out in these four videos that I've done. This one being, to me, the better of the four. As it is the finishing. It's what everybody wants to see. But... It's equally as important to watch them other three videos as they are the foundations to getting this finish. If you don't set it up right, it won't be right and it will be every step will be harder and harder. Same as tailing or bricklaying, if you start off not right, you can't expect a finish right. It's going to be an absolute disaster to try and rectify any mistakes that have happened previous. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Hopefully you have liked the finish I do. And hopefully you can subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And see what crazy wee videos I have coming up on this specific project. Um, I do have a picture of it somewhere on the channel. Of what the end product will all look like. If you just can visualize it. But, yeah, just again. Just checking everything. Making sure it's all tidy and square looking. And... You can never be too fussy when you're doing detail, guys. And, you know, enjoy it. So, thanks for watching, guys. And see you all on the, the next video.